So what are the best and easiest online businesses ideas to start this year? Now, I get this question a lot, especially from our members inside the business lounge, as well as the clients that I coach privately. And it's really interesting because in this day and age, if you really want to start a business, a lot of people think that, you know, you need to have the perfect product, a very refined idea, an awesome business plan, maybe some investment dollars. And the reality is that could not be further from the truth this year. There are several amazing niches and amazing trends that you should be following, but that's for a later video. We're talking about the easiest way to start an online business. And in my opinion, hands down, the easiest way is to start by leveraging the skills that you already have and start charging for your services. Now there's a bunch of reasons why I think that starting a service-based business is really important. So before you go, you know, kind of freaking out about, oh my gosh, I don't necessarily know if I have the skills or how do you even start that hear me out one of the things that I love about running a service-based business is the fact that you know you really can leverage and start it with very very little cash on hand in fact my husband and I started our first company back in 2012 and it was a service-based business the reason why we were able to bootstrap it to multiple seven figures in like 36 months was because it was a service-based business you get to get paid a lot faster. You can leverage your cash flow to close more clients. You don't need to have a ton of equipment or a ton of inventory or a ton of overhead. And if you're wanting to start it online, which I think you should, especially if you're watching this channel, you really don't have to invest in a ton of tools. So I later went on to launch my own service-based business as a social media consultant, a social media manager back in 2013 and I did that with like very little money. I think I started my business with about $60 um, and I spent that, you know, trying to talk to an attorney about my contracts and I really didn't invest a whole lot more in like fancy tools. I really was able to leverage resources and scrap and scratch and claw my way through learning the skill set that I needed. And so once you really focus on leveraging the skills that you either have or you're willing to acquire, you can literally have a business up and running this weekend. I'm not even exaggerating. So when clients come to me, when my members inside the business lounge ask me like, what? I have all these ideas. You know, should I run an e-commerce store? Should I try drop shipping? You know, should I try uh, online courses? Do I need to be, you know, creating physical products? Those are all amazing ideas. But if you are a newbie entrepreneur, if this is the first time that you've kind of, you know, been in business, business, the easiest way to start seriously is through a service, leveraging your skills, charging for them so that you can literally go in and start generating income and revenue in just a couple of weeks, if not, you know, less than that. So I'll tell you a little bit about my story. I actually created a video that I'll link, you know, here, if you want to watch the whole story, but when I started my online business as a consultant, as a social media manager, I didn't, you know, have a ton of experience. I'd spent the past year helping my uh, husband grow that first business that I talked to you about, which was a local, you know, blue collar business, service based business. And so I gained that experience through doing the work. And so if you're trying to think about, okay, what is it that I have that I can leverage? What skills do I have? I really want you to think about, you know, what are some of the things that you're known for? Maybe in your circle of friends, or maybe it's, you know, you already have a career and you have experience, whether it's managing people, you're an expert in hiring, or maybe you have an actual, you know, skill that's a hobby or something that you enjoy, like photography or graphic design all of those skills can really be leveraged to grow your brand. And so if you think about it, a lot of professions can actually easily be turned into service-based businesses, right? If you, let's say, are a nutrition, uh, you know, or a dietetics major, you could have a nutrition consultancy. If you uh, are a coach and you're totally into fitness, you know, maybe you can get you uh, an amazing certification and then become a fitness coach and charge for your services. If you are an IT 
person and you love tech and you kind of, you know, really enjoy helping fix problems, you know, when it comes to hardware or software, you can be an IT consultant. If you love, like I mentioned, photography or videography, or you're an artist, or you really enjoy graphic design, or you love marketing and maybe you're really skilled at building funnels and creating amazing conversion optimization campaigns. All of those things are skills, right? Facebook ads, ads worth. And I know I'm kind of like going into the marketing space because that's what I'm familiar with. But if you are in a totally different service, maybe you are the party planner, right? In your family, or maybe your friends call you up every time their kid has a birthday or they're planning their husband's, you know, party. If you're the party planner in your family, that's a really, really good indication that maybe that's a skill that you could leverage into a full-time business. And so the next step when it comes to kind of figuring that out is brainstorming, right? Just brainstorm a couple ideas as far as what are the skills that you have that you can leverage and turn into a real business. After you've brainstormed, you know, get some feedback, get some advice from your friends um, and maybe not every friend, like pick one or two friends that are people that you really, really trust, right? You don't have to tell the world about what you're thinking. It's just, you know, a matter of seeing if they um, are willing to be honest with you and tell you if they see, you know, that being a potential future endeavor for you. A lot of times, you know, we might have hobbies and that we enjoy, but maybe getting paid for them um, is a different game, right? Maybe we don't necessarily enjoy that. So definitely get some feedback from a spouse or a friend that you trust that can be really honest honest with you and see, you know, if that's something they think that you would actually enjoy and um, be able to scale. The step number two is to validate your idea. And this is the most important portion of kind of figuring out what business to start. Whether you start a product-based business, you know, in a completely different niche, or you start, let's say, an online uh, information business, or you, you're in SaaS and software, it doesn't matter what industry you're in whether you decide to do a service-based business or not, validation is key. So how do you validate your business idea? The first thing I would go and do is I would check out Google Trends. I would look at, you know, what are some of the questions that people are asking? What are some of the services that are popping up? And then really do some deep dive research through Google, who is your best friend, and start looking at whether or not you have competitors, right? So if you have the idea to start a business that you already know other people are actually doing and they're making money from it, there's a bigger chance that this is a good business idea and that's a demand that the market actually has. See, the magic really happens in the entrepreneurial world when your passions really meet the demand for the market. So let's say that you're super passionate about something random like fixing microwaves and you think that this could be a really good potential business idea. Go start looking for microwave repair services, right? And see if you would be willing and able to compete with maybe more established brands. If that's even something that the market is demanding, because if it's not, it's going to be a lot harder for you to create a market than it is to enter or penetrate a new one. So really look at, you know, those validation steps. It's going to really help you figure out exactly how you're going to be rendering the service and whether or not it's something people actually want. Step number three is to create and hash out your business model. Now, before you freak out, don't worry, this isn't like a long extended business you know, plan process. All you're gonna do is really think about how you're going to productize your service. This is key and extremely important. Productizing really means that you're gonna take a service and you're going to figure out how you can put it into different packages that people can choose from, right? You'll see this with pretty much every service out there, whether it's a moving company or a photography service or even IT consultants. Usually service providers have different packages for their customers and clients to choose from so that they can create customized solutions. So, before you worry about how much you should be charging, most people's default is to charge per hour, right? Charge hourly, and that's actually okay. There's nothing wrong with charging hourly when you're first getting started. But remember, there's only 24 hours in a day, so the only way that you can scale up when you're charging hourly is if you're actually increasing your hourly rate. And that's not always doable, right? There's always a ceiling. Um, 
to what people will psychologically want to pay per hour. So a better strategy is to start creating packages for your service, right? Maybe do a basic package where you offer um, a few hours of service and then a bonus or you know a nice resource that you could give to people. And that's actually a really, really good way of creating, you know, different options and alternatives and scaling up and leveraging your time. Cause that's a resource that's not renewable, right? Literally, we cannot get more time. So you really don't want to set up your service-based business around a resource that you have a limit around. And then step number four is to just launch. I know that you're probably not going to feel ready, but you don't really need to do a whole lot when it comes to launching. In fact, Chris and I launched, that's my husband, our first business um, really with just a very lame one page website. So if you can get a landing page out there, um, really cool tools are Squarespace and Wix. I highly recommend WordPress. I think that's the best tool. But if you're just launching and you want to be profitable as quickly as possible, don't get stuck trying to make it perfect, right? Create something basic that you can send your clients to, especially if you're thinking about pitching people online and make sure that it looks legit, right? There's a bunch of resources online that you can check out that'll help you set up your website. Make it a one page landing page. It doesn't have to be crazy. Just include your contact information, a little bit about you, and of course your credential. If you wanna learn more about this entire process, this video is brought to you by The Business Lounge. It's our flagship mentorship program, and inside we have over 30 training courses that are literally gonna show you inside of a success path exactly the steps that you need to be taking to grow your online business literally from creating your business idea to validating it to figuring out your business model creating your website and then launching that getting customers scaling hiring a team all the way up from zero like absolute scratch to six figures and beyond so I'm really excited about that we're gonna include the link to that in the description box below all right so the next step after that is really figuring out how you're going to be pitching clients right and acquiring those clients when you start a service-based business, make sure that you really understand the skill that you're trying to, um, you know, convey or, or give away to people. It's a very bad idea to go into a business that you know nothing about. I'm not saying you have to have everything figured out, but you should have at least done this before successfully and been able to give clients results, right? So if you're not really sure whether or not your skills are to the point where you should be charging, try out offering your services for free at the beginning to maybe one or two trial clients who can also become amazing testimonial partners. This is part of building your portfolio. And I can't tell you how many times my husband and I have given away our services, our products, our programs, in our businesses in order to really validate those ideas, refine our process and get amazing client testimonials that we can then leverage into paid contracts. So it's really important that you understand how to do this successfully. And so a lot of times it can be challenging to like approach strangers and say, Hey, I do this service. Would you be willing to try it out? You know, don't, get in your head really at the end of the day you're really going to be servicing someone right you are offering them a solution to a problem so the first step is to just do it and some of the ideas that i have for you to finding your first clients are very simple if you can join you know a facebook group or a linkedin group in the industry that you are thinking about entering and then start talking to people who can be potential clients engage, interact, ask questions. And of course, if you think that it's going to be the right fit, it's a really good way of meeting people and then asking them if they would be willing to become a beta tester. And really that's just a term that you can use to launch any type of service or product. You can ask them if they wanna be a beta tester and then in exchange, let them know that you're gonna be giving them the service for free. Maybe you would love and exchange just a review or a client testimonial if they're satisfied with the service. And if not, no strings attached, there's no contracts to be signed and no payments you know, to be interchanged. This is a phenomenal way of building your portfolio. And again, one of the best ways that I've found in the past to build my own service-based business. So once you have some experience, you've built your portfolio, you have your website, you have an idea of the business model, you've talked to a few prospects, now it's time to get serious and get paid. So find 
finding clients is a lot easier said than done sometimes, but I will tell you, it's not as complicated as a lot of people make it out or you know make it sound. Really, it depends on the industry that you're in. And so if you are, let's say in a local based business, you wanna network a lot with people in that local area, cause that's the place where you're gonna be servicing, right? Ideally, you're starting an online business so that the entire world could potentially be your client. It's amazing because there's no boundaries, there's no geographical constraints, and of course, you can literally reach everyone and anyone through the internet. So what I would do is I would really get focused on who are my ideal clients and then how you know are they interacting online? Where can I find them? That might be Facebook groups. It might be you know places like even Craigslist. It might be LinkedIn groups. It might be social media. It might be word of mouth. It might be in-person networking events. All of those places are important. So I would get yourself, if you're gonna be networking you know, in a local uh, setting, some business cards or even just maybe you know a little postcard that you could send around and kind of pass around and talk to people about what you're doing. You know, it doesn't have to be a formal pitch. It can just be literally an engagement and interaction. The other thing I would do is scour, you know, Facebook groups and start typing in some keywords inside those Facebook groups related to your industry so that you can see if people are asking for services. You will be surprised how many people post on Facebook group ask Facebook groups asking for recommendations of service providers, right? Hey, do you know anyone who's really good at managing, you know, websites? Do you know anyone who's a great designer? Do you know anyone, you know, who's maybe uh, an expert in packaging? Do you know anyone who uh, is an amazing photographer? I need to have, you know, some headshots. All of those things are really, really important and you could be literally building your business off of organic traffic, organic interactions that just happen on social media. The other thing you can do is of course, get out in front of the people that really matter, that are going to help move the needle forward in your business. I'll tell you the first thing that I did. To pitch my first client, I literally went to Craigslist and I started looking at people who were advertising for social media interns, you know, small businesses, people that I knew I could help. And I actually went to a interview, I set up an interview, um, and instead of going through the whole process, I actually pitched the client on becoming, you know, an actual client. I said, hey, instead of hiring someone, have you ever thought about outsourcing? Um, I do this for several other clients. Here's my portfolio. I think I could save you a lot of money and it would actually be a very prosperous long-term relationship that you don't necessarily have to feel super committed to because we can terminate the contract at any time. At that time, that probably wasn't the smartest thing to do, but it never <laughs> backfired, which was great. Um, so that was the way that I pitched my first client. And you can absolutely do this. Get creative, think outside the box, look for people and friends that you can really build up relationships with, that can refer you, and then just go for it. There's so many opportunities to be had online. It's just a matter of going for it and not looking back. Anyway, guys, so I hope you enjoyed our little chat all about starting you know, an online business this year. Really the easiest way of doing that, in my opinion, is starting a service-based business. And of course, there's a question of the day. I would love to hear from you. Let's connect in the comment section. I'm sure you have questions after, you know, kind of consuming all this information. Um, let me know. Let me know what are your biggest questions around starting a service-based business. And if you already have a service-based business, let me know what are your biggest challenges to growing or scaling it. I'd love to create a part two of this video if that's something that you would love to see. And of course, if you're not subscribed, yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss out on another episode. Thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next episode of Kim TV. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't joined our free mastermind Facebook group, what are you doing? It's called the Business Lounge Mastermind. It's absolutely free and it's an amazing way of connecting with other online entrepreneurs just like you who are grinding it out, hustling on the internet to make their dreams come true. I will see you inside. Bye for now.